Qt is one of those technologies you have probably heard of. It's one of the most flexible and comprehensive frameworks for building embedded software and modern cross-platform apps. Now, I don't want to sound like a fanboy. There are situations where other technologies might be a better fit, but the reality is, as a consulting company working for customers from quality industries, we often choose Qt deliberately because Qt constantly delivers value where it counts. So if you are a product lead, CTO or decision maker evaluating your next tech stack, this video is for you. I will walk you through what Qt is, where it excels and where you might want to consider alternatives so you can make a more informed technical decision. And if you are a developer looking to learn Qt as your next skill, I have made a whole tutorial uh, that goes into the framework from a hands-on programmer's perspective. You will find link below. My name is Lukas Kosinski, CEO of Senko Software. We specialize in software development for quality industries with a strong focus on medical applications. Our team delivers solutions across embedded desktop, mobile and web, and we are recognized experts in C++, Qt and QML. We have worked with Qt for years, and in this video I want to give you a clear, experience-based perspective on where it fits in today's uh, products landscape. Let's get into it. For product teams, Qt solves a genuine problem. How do we build a consistent, high-quality app across desktop, mobile, and embedded systems without managing multiple code bases? Qt is designed from the ground up to be cross-platform. You write your app once and it runs natively on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android and iOS and it's also supported by a wide range of embedded devices. That saves time and reduces risk. For our clients who often run on a very tight schedule, this is uh, really, really significant benefit. For embedded devices, using Qt Framework also gives more flexibility when looking for hardware target. So, for example, with Qt you can build software for both resource-limited MCUs and high-end MPUs. We partner with companies like Toradex, Somlabs, ST Microelectronics, NXP or Renesas, whose boards are capable of running Qt apps. But beyond portability, another advantage is that Qt helps you build the kind of graphical user interface people expect today fluid, touch-friendly, and modern. Qt comes with own UI programming language called QML and the module Qt Quick consisting of various visual components. With QML and Qt Quick, you can create custom styled UIs, animations, and real-time feedback that feels modern out of the box. For backend logic, Qt apps usually use C++ and Python, but Qt Group, organization behind the framework, does a lot of effort to expand Qt to other programming languages. Just for the beginning, there will be a support to Rust, .NET, Swift, Kotlin, and Java. The separation of UI and backend code benefits the projects and it keeps your team moving fast, especially when UI and backend need to evolve in parallel. And since Qt isn't just a UI toolkit, you also get modules for networking, threading, databases, sensors, multimedia, and more all in one consistent, well documented framework. Qt isn't a new or untested technology. It's a major framework that's been on the market for decades with continuous support and a stable roadmap. Many industries like this maturity, so here are some examples where Qt is especially well received. In the medical sector, Qt is often used to power all sorts of interfaces for medical equipment and diagnostic tools. One example is a custom software system that we develop for uh, spine surgeries um, that integrates with PAC server and Diacom standards. This software allows surgeons to access and interact with imaging data, medical imaging data, seamlessly during uh, all the surgeries all within a Qt-based interface. In automotive sector, companies like Mercedes-Benz and Peugeot 
use CUDE for in-vehicle infotainment and digital dashboards. CUDE is widely used also in the combination with Android Automotive, popular variant of Android operating system, so you can benefit from both CUDE's capabilities and Android flexibility. We also have a case study in this sector. We have worked on CUDE-powered cockpit interfaces that deliver smooth performance across multiple displays, perfect for EV startups or R&D teams building mobility systems. Qt is also present in industrial and embedded systems. Uh, so think about um, factory displays, connected control panels or robotics. And in the enterprise and finance world, Qt is behind high performance desktop tools. So whether we are building uh, for a touch display in a hospital or a radial HMI in a factory or a trading terminal, chances are that Qt already is used to solve a similar problem. So why do teams choose Qt and stick with it? First, it's truly cross-platform. One code base runs across desktop, mobile and embedded systems. That reduces complexity and of course shortens development cycles. Second, Qt enables rich, modern user interfaces. With QML and Qt Quick, you can build sleek animated UIs that respond to touch, gestures, and real-time data, and all that with a native feel. For traditional desktop applications, Qt widgets give you the familiar power of classic UI components. Third, it's more than a UI toolkit. At first, Qt framework was known as a tool for building GUI, but they developed modules for much more applications. Networking, database access, multi-threading, multimedia, and even hardware uh, level integrations. Your entire application with Qt can be built using just this one single consistent framework. In medical industry, uh, this aspect is crucial because uh, less SOUP, software of unknown provenance, the better. And I believe that with uh, current cybersecurity rules is the same for other industries. So because it's built in C++, Qt gives you low-level control when you need it and native speed execution by default. So this is critical for real-time systems or devices under resource constraints like embedded ones. And for teams, Qt encourages efficiency. Designers can work independently in KML while developers implement core logic in C++ or Python. With tools like Qt Creator and Qt Design Studio, you can prototype quickly, preview changes live, and iterate fast. Now, no framework is perfect, and Qt has a few things worth considering before you commit. First, the learning curve. Qt is powerful, but it's rooted in C++. That means your team may need time or training if they are coming from, for example, web first environment. Nowadays, a lot of um, students choose JavaScript or, or Python as their first language. Of course, our company can help train your team, but overall, if no one on your team has a foundation in C++, the learning curve will be steeper. While QML simplifies UI development, understanding how it connects with C++ can take effort. I have seen a lot of folks doing it in the wrong way. Second, Qt apps can have a larger resource footprint compared to ultra lightweight GUI libraries, like for example, LVGL uh, that we also use at Somcom. So if you are building uh, for extremely constrained hardware, say low, low end uh, MCUs, Qt may not be the right fit unless you use the specialized Qt for MCUs, but this is available under commercial license. Third, while Qt supports Android and iOS, it doesn't always offer out-of-the-box access to every native feature. Deep platform integration might require writing uh, native code bridges in C++, uh, Java, Objective-C, and it adds complexity. Licensing is another factor. Qt offers both open source and commercial licenses, but uh, some advanced modules are available only under commercial terms. So it's important to plan ahead and choose the right path for your product. But overall, yes, you can build commercial products with free version of Qt without disclosing your source code. 
And finally, tooling. Qt Creator is solid and improving, but teams used to environments like Visual Studio or C-Lion might notice a difference, especially in large-scale projects. But you can use these other tools for Qt programming um, as well. All that being said, for most professional use cases, especially when you need consistent UI, hardware integration, and long-term maintainability, Qt serves far outweighed its friction. So, should you use Qt? If you are building a product that needs to run on multiple platforms and you want to maintain a consistent experience across all of them, Qt is a very strong option. Furthermore, it's particularly well-suited for projects that involve embedded systems of various types. That includes uh, of course, medical devices, industrial systems, dashboards of all kinds, and uh, professional desktop tools. If you need modern, high-performance UIs and care about long-term maintainability, Qt also delivers. On the other hand, if your app is simple, web-first, or your team is deeply invested in non-C++ ecosystems, uh, there are might be lighter, faster to deploy alternatives like React or something like that. But Qt isn't just trying to be the easiest or trendiest framework. It's built for products that need to last, scale, and perform in real-world environments. So let's sum it up. Qt is not a hype-driven framework. It's a major full-stack solution. If your goal is to ship cross-platform products, whether on a screen, in a hospital, in a vehicle, on, on a factory floor, Qt deserves a serious look. At Somco Software, we have helped companies across medical, automotive, industrial, and financial sectors turn Qt into production-ready software. So, if you are exploring Qt, or you are unsure how it fits your stack, reach out to us, and we are always happy to help you evaluate whether it's the right move for your product. Thanks for watching, and if you find it helpful, feel free to share it with your team.